Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So recently I posted a tutorial on V-Carve Inlay. Right before I posted that video, a viewer asked me, could I do a tutorial on stacked text? Now if you don't know what stacked text is, this is stacked text. Three-dimensional, raised off the board, the letters are joined, and we're going to show that fellow how to do this. Now, once you get this process down, the possibilities are endless. So let's go get on the computer and let's get this lesson started. Oh, don't forget, like and subscribe, y'all. Let's get started. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that there are several different ways of doing this. This is how I do it, however. So let's open up CarveCo and get started here. We're going to go to New Model. We're going to have a width of 14 and a height by 7. The reason that we do this is so that you can go to any big box store and purchase any 1 by 8 and produce these signs. Obviously you can change this if you'd like to and go bigger by making panels, but this is just a basic tutorial with a basic ability to acquire materials without having to do extensive woodworking to make this happen. Click OK, and we're greeted with the 3D view. Now the first thing we need to do is create a box around our work area, and to do that we click on the square tool, hover in the corner until we get the bullseye, left click, drag to the right, and some of these things should be basic if you're doing stack text, you probably already know how to do these. Grab the corner, left click and drag in to create a rounded corner. To the right side and click create you now have an outside edge to your project but we need to create an offset because we need a shoulder or a pocket to recess to raise the letters from so if we go to the offset tool which will be on the left we want to offset a quarter of an inch inward sharp corners and click offset and now you can see that you have two vectors which will create a pocket in the center. You can delete the outside vector because we don't need that. We're going to go with a square board, a square sign. So push delete on your keyboard. That removes the outside vector. Next step is text. So go over to the T, click on the letter. Now on this side where your text selections are, I usually start with a size of 50 that's fine we're going to change the size of it once we get it on the page anyway I like to use Tahoma for the words in the background so click in the center of your workspace and let's start typing let's use Smith now there I like to use capital letters all caps in the background over to this side scroll down click create and I realize it's nowhere near big enough yet we're gonna fix that it's already selected if it's not just click on one of the letters and it'll select them come over to the left look for the throwing star the transform tool it gives you these dots now hover your mouse over this dot or this dot push alt on your keyboard hold it down left click hold down and drag and we're gonna stretch mr. Smith out don't worry about him going off the page click F9 to put him in the center and obviously we're too big so we'll hover back over this side alt again and push back inward that looks pretty close hover over this dot push alt pull up you can increase this and this is a judgment call on your part you can make this larger smaller however whatever appeals to you all right we're done with that back over to the arrow close out the selection you don't want the word selected so click off of the word go back to the text tool on this side click the T again click up here above the Smith and then we need to change to a different font we don't need to but I enjoy changing to a different font. That way it just looks a little nicer. And I like to use, believe it or not, one that's called Cookie. And Cookie is right here. Again, we're gonna start with 50 for a size, that's plenty. 
We're just going to type the word, obviously, John. Everybody uses John Smith. We're going to create John. We're going to hit F9 to put John in the center. And then just like before, we're going to go to the Transform tool, and we're going to manipulate this to the size we like. Let's stretch it out here. Again, this is all a judgment call. Stretch it out here. I think that looks pretty good. Click off of John. Give us a little peek here. Absolutely, that works for me. So the next step is to put John on his own layer. And layers are where the confusion begins, I believe. Click on John. Right click on John. Click copy. Right click on John once more and click paste. Right click on John again and you're looking for move vectors to new layer. Click on new layer. All right, by now I'm sure you're asking yourself, why did I copy and paste that on the same page and nothing happened? Well, something did happen. When you copied John, you made a duplicate over the top of the original. When you moved John to a new layer, it took one of those copies and moved it to the new layer over here. Had you not copied directly over top of itself, John would no longer exist on the default layer, which is the first layer that we started working with. Now, what I like to do is come over here to the default layer on this side, click on the default layer, and change the name of that by clicking on it once more to combined. Change the name to combined. Because on this layer, we're going to join these two words into one, which will then mean this is no longer a word, it's a picture. Let's go back to the vector layer here. Now, some points to remember when working with layers. Very important points. If you don't remember these, it's going to get you pretty discombobulated. The layer that is highlighted in yellow is the active layer. Any changes you make will affect that layer only. Now each layer has a light bulb on each side, as you can see, and it says toggle visibility. If we have the vector layer on the top highlighted and we shut off the light bulb, you don't think anything has happened, but something has happened. Turn off the second light bulb and you can see that it all disappears. If we go back to the first light bulb and turn it back on, you can see that John reappears because John is all by itself on the vector layer that we created. While we're at it, let's change that name by clicking on vector layer once more. We'll change that to John. So now we have John, hit enter. We have the John layer with John on it. We have the combined layer with, well, why don't we have anything? The reason we don't have anything is because the light bulb's not turned on. If we turn the light bulb on, Smith and the border comes back. So we have to keep that in mind as we're working between the two layers, what layer we're working on and what we're altering or changing. To help remind yourself which layer you're working on, you can actually change the color of the vectors as a reminder that, oh, I'm working on this vector or that vector. To do this, click on the black dot here, combined. You'll be greeted with a color palette, and you can choose any number of colors to change it to. And you can also create custom colors down in here. We don't need to do that in this case. This is already confusing enough. So let's choose this color, click OK. And as you can see now, the combined layer has changed colors. Click on the John layer, click on the black circle. Let's give him, oh, let's say this color right here. Click on OK. 
and you can now see that John is that color. To prove this, we can shut off the light bulb on the combined layer and turn on the light bulb on John, and you can see now that he is indeed that color. Let's go back to the combined layer and make that layer active. Shut off the light bulb on the John layer. Turn on the light bulb on the combined layer. To join these two words into one picture is a simple process. You're going to use bitmaps to do this. A quick definition of the bitmap is you're going to use color instead of lines for vectors. Just as if you had imported a picture, you would use a bitmap to vector to create your vectors around your image. We're going to do the same thing here. First thing we do is switch to the 2D view. We then go to model. We need to adjust our resolution to its maximum. Left click, slide to the right. Click OK. Don't worry about this warning. Yes, you want to continue. Click on the word Smith. Go to bitmap. We're going to flood fill vectors. We're filling them in black. Flood fill vectors. Push delete on the keyboard. Select John. Go to flood fill vectors once more. Bitmap, flood fill vectors. Push delete again on the keyboard. As you can see, now we have one image, but we still need vectors for the computer to run on. So we go to bitmap to vector. We don't need to reduce colors because we're dealing with black and white. Create the vectors. Shut off the bitmap to vector drop down, and let's prove that the vectors are there. We'll go over here, shut off the bitmap light bulb. And as you can see, we've combined the two words into one image. Now a point I want to make here, when you're looking at this image, you can see a spot right there and another spot right there. Those two points are too small for any tool that we have to work with. So click off of the image, click on those vectors alone, and delete them. And you'll have to doctor your words and your vectors in this way each time you want to make a stacked text image. So we're good on the combined layer. We've combined the two words together and we can make tool paths on this combination. But we still need to do the same thing with John. So let's go over to the right, shut off the light bulb on the combined layer, turn on the John layer, turn on the light bulb, and as you can see, John comes back. We're going to do the same process here with John, but we want to do it in a different color than black. So we'll go down here on the bottom and select a different color. Activate John with a click. Go to bitmaps. And you're going to flood fill vectors once more. Now I want to warn you, when you click flood fill vectors, Smith is going to reappear. Ignore that Smith. It does not exist. It's not doing anything on this layer. So here we go. We'll click it. And as you can see, Smith has returned. Just ignore that. Push delete on your keyboard just as you did before. Bitmap to vectors just as before to create your vectors. Close out the screen. Now, what we're going to do is get rid of all this color. That's easily done. We go over here. We click on the triangle next to bitmaps. We click on bitmap layer. We go down to this pencil eraser. We click on that, and it gets rid of all the color. And as you can see, we now have the vectors we need. Step by step here, we're getting to the point where we'll have a stacked text image or carving. But as we look at John, I can see there's some problems with this text. We have some overlaps right here, right here, and right here. 
In this case, that's a simple fix. Click off of John. Click on those vectors that are overlapping. Push delete on your keyboard. Go to the next one and light it up. Push delete. Go to the next one. Light it up and push delete. And now you have John corrected. You have all the vectors. We'll go over here and we'll hit group so that they stay together. We'll go back over here. We'll turn on the combined layer. Shut off John's light bulb. Turn on combined light bulb. We want this border on the John layer. Easily done. Click on it, right click, click copy, turn on the John layer, turn off the light bulb on the combined layer, turn the light bulb on for John, right click, paste once more, and we now have the border on the John layer as well. And we are ready for tool paths. Tool paths are very simple. Highlight the word John, push shift on your keyboard, highlight the border, go to tool paths, scroll down to area clearance, our start depth is zero, our finish depth on this case is 0.1. Again, these numbers are numbers that I use and that I think look nice. You can alter your numbers as you go along. But point 0.1 for a finish depth on the forward letter seems to work well. We need to add a tool. Now we're going to add multiple tools here to make sure that we can get into the cracks and crevices of the word. We're going to take the biggest tool we have, and in my case it's a quarter inch end mill. We're going to select that. We're going to select another one by hitting add once more. We're going to go to eighth inch. We're going to select that. And then we're going to scroll down. You can see that the eighth inch end mill is up. We want to change the tool path to offset. Because this word is so tiny, we probably should slow the speed down to 70 inches per minute. It is tool number two. And let's go to the eighth quarter inch end mill, excuse me change its tool path direction to offset. The feed rate on that one is 100 inches per minute. That's probably okay. The quarter inch end mill is going to hog away all this stuff in here and get in as close as it can to your vectors. Then it's going to ask you to switch to this tool, the eighth inch, and it's going to get into the even tighter spots on your image. We scroll down, we set up the material thickness which in this case would be three quarters of an inch we click OK we give this a name I guess we should call it John and we calculate as you can see it's carving away everything for the John let's simulate the tool path Pushing down on the space bar, you can see that John is raised. We have the border. Looking good. Go to simulation, delete the simulation. Click here to bring your vectors back. Click here to close up the bitmaps. Let's switch to the combined layer. Shut off John's light bulb. Turn on the combined layer light bulb. Shut off your tool paths. And now we make tool paths for the combined layer. Same thing, we highlight all of the picture. Group it together. Push shift. Click on the border. Click on tool paths. Down to area clearance. Now this time we start depth at point one, which is where we left off with the previous set of tools. 
Our finished depth will be 0.25, one quarter of an inch. We come down and add tools again, just like before. A quarter inch tool. We'll add an eighth inch tool. And we'll go down and change the tool path to offset. We'll click back on the one quarter inch and change that to offset. We'll click on the quarter inch drop down. That should be tool number three. We'll click on the eighth inch and that should be tool number four. And then the material thickness is already set up. We'll give it a name called combined. And then we will calculate now. Right click on tool paths, simulate all tool paths, simulate. Click on simulation, change the default color to medium oak, hit apply, click in by the image, push down on the space bar, and as you can see, we have stacked text. Now we just have to save the tool paths and we can go out and make this sign. So let's click on, or let's delete the simulation. Let's turn the vectors back on. We'll turn the tool paths off and let's go to save tool paths. Can bring these all back. Now I want to point out that you really should have a bit setter for this process or pawn CNC's stop collars. It just makes it much simpler to pass from tools one to four without having to re-zero for Z on each time. If you don't have those two tools, you can click on save tool pass to separate files and it will save these each into a different file and you can run them as if they were different projects by simply changing the bit and resetting zero for Z, not your X and Y, just Z. And I gotta give a viewer credit for that. He showed me that recently. I didn't realize that was there. I used to save each one of these individually. So Carl, you know who you are. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. But if you had a bit setter or pawn CNC's collars, you would have rearranged these so that they were in the correct positions so that tool number one was used first, tool number two is used second, number three and number four. You would give it a name down here and you would hit save and go out to the mill and run the tools. As always, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope that it took away some confusion. If it did, give us a like. Subscribe to the channel, please, if you haven't done so already. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.